welcome back to another video. Got a beautiful day out here in dirty Jersey. Blue skies, clear skies, beautiful Sunday. So you saw the title of the video. What did I title the video? I don't know what I titled the video, but today we're gonna be talking about long miles on smaller bikes. I'm here on my 2024 Lowrider ST, tobacco fade, and kind of wanted to have this discussion because a lot of times people have the perception that you can only do long miles on big bikes, not on small bikes. So before we dive into the discussion, let me just say that A, this is not a small bike. B, I am not trying to persuade your mind or tell you not to buy a bagger and this should be good enough. And C, let's just have an open discussion today. So let's just start talking about this bike first. The Lowrider ST in its stock form with the Milwaukee 8 117 is packing a ton of power. So it has enough torque and enough horsepower at every range. It's a really peppy engine. I, I'm a really big fan of the 117. Have I done some minor changes to mine? Yeah, this one has a uh, stage two with a Psychorama 483 cam, which I love the way this bike performs and sounds. Um, but in its stock form, the, the bike is great. This bike also has a five gallon gas tank and you're gonna be averaging around uh, 200 miles per se, depending on how you're riding, obviously. Um, but I took this bike on a really long ride and it, even with the stage two, I was averaging maybe 185 miles to the tank and I had no complaints whatsoever from that ride. Now, this bike is also gonna come equipped with the Lowrider ST fairing in the front. It was a really comfortable ride and honestly i want to plan even longer rides now so one of the reasons why i also want to do this video is to kind of talk about the trips that i've done with this bike and kind of go over the trips that i want to plan for for the year to come to do it on this bike as well when you're talking about doing long miles or a cross-country trip or crossing state lines people automatically say or think hey well you should do it on a bagger. You should do it on a road glide, on a street glide, on limited, whatever bagger preference you're thinking about, that's what people automatically think about first. Now, I'm here to tell you that you don't need a bagger to do cross country rides at all. You could do it on a bike just like this. I've seen people do longer trips even on Sportsters. Now, is it the most comfortable can you compare it? Can you compare the comfort from this bike to a bagger? No, I would honestly say the bagger is going to be more comfortable for that, of course. But can you do it on this? Of course. So if you currently have a smaller bike or a bike somewhat that fits this characteristic right here and you really want to get into doing longer miles, I mean, you, you really don't have to get a bagger. You, you could do it on something like this. Save yourself that extra money. Customize the bike to your liking. Or if you want to keep it stock, some people keep their bike stock. Um, then do so as well. But you could definitely do it on this. Let's talk about real quick about some of the trips that I've taken on this bike. This year, we took the bike from New Jersey all the way out to Milwaukee. That was 900 miles to go. Another 900 miles and change to come back. I had a blast riding this bike over there. I had no issues. Comfort wise, it was fine. Um, yes, my bike does have a few upgrades. So I do have a different bar and riser setup from what stock is. This is my crowd setup right here. I do have a LaParis seat as well. So I would say customize your bike to your liking and to your comfort. Um, but I, I had no complaints, literally no complaints whatsoever. Um, and I had a really good time riding this bike over there. I, and, and I'll be honest with you, at first I was like, I really don't know how I'm gonna feel once I get there due to the fact that I used to have a Rogue Glide. 
um, and that bike was really comfortable for longer miles. Uh, I took that bike, uh, what was the longest ride I took that bike? I think that road glide I took it up to New Hampshire from Jersey to New Hampshire, which talking about that, we also took this bike from New Jersey to New Hampshire for Laconia Bike Week and that was a, a, a shorter ride, about a six hour ride. I don't know how many miles is it, maybe, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna put it up right here. It might be close to 300 miles but a shorter ride and the, the bike also did phenomenal i use the bike a lot for you know around town cruising uh close destination so i live in jersey so a lot of the places where i go to are within jersey um around new york upstate new york uh we ride out to connecticut um so the tri-state area most of the uh the close states that are nearby that's the type of riding that uh me and my friends do but next year next year i really want to plan some longer rides on here now that i know that i could do it on here on this bike without an issue and still be comfortable and still have that same amount of wind protection that i would on a bagger and on top of that i have bags right so these clamshell bags are they the biggest no but I, i've with with all my travel experience that i've had from the past i do travel a lot as well i learned throughout these years to pack very light you'd be surprised at the amount of things you actually don't need when you're out there traveling especially when you travel with a, with a few friends that you know they might have more space or maybe there's a car or a truck that's a chaser behind you can just fill up or pack into the bag and throw it on there as well that's always very helpful that's what we did we had two of the guys that trailered their bikes out there and we had extra bags we packed and we put them in that truck so i was helpful now wind protection as well i have a eight inch clockworks windshield on here which i changed out from the stock i would recommend anyone to get a taller windshield it definitely helps out a lot now let's talk about a few things that make, let's say, a Rogue Glide a really good bike to tour on. Because it's a touring bike. Uh, it's comfortable. That riding triangle on a Rogue Glide or Street Glide is really comfortable. That frame is really nice. It has a fairing, it has bags, it has a GPS, it has music, audio. It has a six gallon gas tank. So does it have a lot more going for itself for longer rides than a bike like this? Of course, all around, it's a better bike for travel. But the point of this video is to talk about this bike and being able to travel still on a smaller bike. Um, so let's just compare it to the Road Glide. I mean, we have a fairing, we have bags. GPS and audio are the ones we're not gonna have, uh, but I got a quad lock and I just put my phone on here and the phone for the GPS does fine. Um, if you're worried about charging your phone, this bike also comes with a USB connector on the neck right here. So your phone is gonna be charged all day so you don't have to worry about that. If you wanna add or pack more stuff, get yourself a sissy bar, get yourself a rack and strap down a bag onto there you have more space for that and then if you really want audio they do have audio for this bike which I still need to get um, so if that's one of the things that you really want or it's like hey I you know it's like a hit or miss for me because of the audio you can always add it now comfort wise let's talk about the frame on the riding triangle the road glide and the street glide obviously a touring bike is much more comfortable especially for taller guys you taller guys are going to be a little bit more cramped up on this bike right here just because of the riding triangle and the way it's built uh but for you shorter guys out there or gals uh who are around my height i am five six five seven on a good day um you're fine you see right here my knee has a slight slight little bend going forward so very comfortable for me if you're taller you're gonna have your knees kind of up here and obviously for a really long ride that that could get a little uh uncomfortable one of the things that i was doing while i was going out there was just stretching on my feet to the back uh 
pegs right here, the uh, passenger pegs, and that helped me out a lot. But if you, you want to stretch out and put your feet on your crash bar in the front, you could do that. Um, that also helps out just to help your blow circulate around. Now, some of the longer rides that I'm planning to do in the year to come is Canada. I really want to do Canada, so we're going to ride from New Jersey, ride through New York, all the way up to Canada. Go up to Niagara Falls and explore some, uh, some of the local towns and cities in Canada. It's one ride that I've been trying to plan for the last year, so that might be like a nine hour ride around there or so, um, depending if we take back roads or not, that might be a little longer. Um, another ride that I got planned that I've been wanting to do for the last year or two as well is Tennessee. So I want to ride from New Jersey all the way down to Tennessee, do the Dragon, do the Tail of the Dragon, ride around and explore Tennessee because I hear nothing but great things about Tennessee um, and it's riding roads and everything. Um, definitely want to go off peak. I don't want to go when there's any type of huge rallies going on because I really want to enjoy the, the open roads. Um, so that's the second ride. Another ride that I really want to do is head out west and ride the A66. Another ride that I really want to do is to ride the Pacific Coast. Um, it's going to be tough to do that for me on this bike. I, I got to see what, what I could try to plan out because there's a certain amount of time that I'm going to need to take off work to, in order to ride across country and then ride all the way from the top of California into Mexico. That's what I want to do. I want to ride from California into Mexico. Um, so that that's a lot of time that I don't have from work. So I got to figure something out. So will I probably do it on this bike? No, but that's definitely a ride that, um, that I want to plan for next year. Either I fly out there and, and do that get a bike out there somehow the number one ride on my bucket list is is that one but anyways i want to hear from you guys i want to hear if anyone on a low rider or low rider st or any any soft tail at that i want to know if you guys are out there really crushing miles on these bikes where have you gone where are you planning to go and do you think that the soft tail platform is fine enough to do touring like i said before I'm not doing this video to say, hey, don't get yourself a touring bike and just get this because, you know, you get what you want. This video was just to talk about that any touring you're going to be doing on a bagger, you could do on this. You can save yourself some money and it's a smaller bike. Is it a small bike? No, but it's a smaller bike. And if you are watching and you have a bagger, are, are you thinking about maybe a downsize into a soft tail some people are some some are not some are you know what they're just super happy with the road glide or street glide or limited whatever they have and that's what they like you ride what you like and lastly i think what you need to ask yourself is what are you looking for when you're looking for a bike that you want to tour on i think it just comes down to that care about all the fancy things what are the boxes that need to be checked off on your list in order for any bike to be a touring bike anyways i am going to keep enjoying my day because it's it's really beautiful out here and if you are not yet subscribed to the channel then go ahead and subscribe hit that bell button that's going to notify you anytime i upload any type of new content i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one like always let the force be with you ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace.